These are the types of risks that are out there. There's seven, I'll talk through them quickly. They don't all exist in all services, but I wanted to show you what they all are. The main one is the top one, functional risk. So when someone walks through your door, a new client who is going to use your service, often what's running through their head in that little speech bubble is, will this service do what it promised? Will they deliver what their market promise was? Okay. And how will I know that they've done that? It's like when you take your car in to be serviced and you're not a mechanic and you don't know. You just pick it up and you think, why? They did it? I don't know. Because you actually don't know. So that's what's called functional risk. That's when we think, oh, you know, is it going to sort of play out? It's a bit like when you go to the movies and you think, geez, I hope this is funny. They said it was going to be, but you're never quite 100% sure until the movie's actually running. A part of that is the nature of the service. Because service is an experience, you can't really evaluate it until you're in the middle of experiencing it and in the moment of it. Another type of risk is physical risk. So obviously, it depends on your service. So it might be personal injury or damage to possessions. Um, so if, say you're taking your dog in to be groomed and you're maybe concerned that there may be some physical risk to them or that, or that they won't be looked after well and they can't talk so they can't tell you. Sensory risk is any other impact on the senses, so depending on your service. This might be, for example, if something's too loud or you know, there's a lot of noise, for example, or people are going to a concert or an event and they can't hear properly uh, because of the audio, for example. So sensory risk might be that you go to a hotel room and you look out and you're looking at it out, open the window and you're looking at a brick wall. So that's a sensory risk because obviously that's not an attractive thing to look at. Social risk is really interesting because we're all social beings and we all like to say that we're all, in, you know, that we all row our own boat and we're not influenced by others, but the fact is we all are. So well, how others think and react about our use of a service or while we're in the service is absolutely critical. This social risk is something that a lot of people don't articulate, but it's often hidden there underneath. Financial risk is obvious. Because it's a service and most people don't know how it's, and, and it's variable, so you can go to the same hairdresser and get your hair cut by that person 10 times and every time it will be slightly different. That's what's called variability because that's the nature of services, okay? Uh, you might go to a doctor 10 times and every time you go, it'll be a slightly different level of quality of service because it's humans delivering a service to a human and humans are flawed and we don't do things consistently. So with financial risk, sometimes there's this idea sitting there that, you know, geez, I hope they do it better this time or they hope they do it right. Time loss. Big thing these days, we're all time poor. We like to think that we're time poor, and so we don't like to waste money. Um, and then personal fears. That psychology is absolutely clear, is, is, is a really key one as well. We don't want to say something silly. We don't want to walk into a new restaurant or a new place or whatever your service is and not know what to say, where to stand, who to talk to, you know, what to do. So that's why the script matters. So in the theatre, so for example, when you came here tonight, there were signs when you got to the top, go here, go left. That's the script, that's the signs that we read as a part of the theatre. So consider as customers first enter your service environment or go onto your web page, is it clear how to navigate it? Do they know where to go? Is it intuitive? Have you built in the sort of safety measures around it? Psychological risk is where we doubt ourselves. It's like when we've got something wrong with our internet and we ring up and say, you know, we sort of, it's sort of doing this, but I'm sort of not sure what it's doing, and you don't have the words, and you don't want to sound silly because you don't know what you're doing, but you sort of do sound silly because you don't know what you're talking about. It's that fear of saying something dumb, basically. I just, that's sort of how it comes out. 